Kevin. What are you doing? Well, I've been getting a lot of questions lately. You know, I've gotten several emails. I've gotten a few phone calls. Uh, guys who just picked themselves up a TIG and are like, oh my God, I bought this thing and now it won't work. And I can't figure out what's wrong. You know, what, 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 you know, something. The machine is bad. I hear that a lot. The machine's bad. No, no, calm down a minute. You know, let, let's talk about some of the things that can go wrong. So now one of the biggest mistakes I think first-time TIG welders make, first-time TIG owners make, depending on what machine you have now, because I've got two different machines here and they hook up differently. But I know my first mistake when I got my first TIG welder was I got these two backwards. You know, they look the same, they hook up the same. One of them is for the torch, one of them is for the ground. Well, you think ground, okay, ground, I know ground. I know the little ground symbol. I know the little negative symbol. That must mean the ground goes in the negative symbol. No. <laughs> no, uh, you know, depending on which, depending on which machine you have, Sometimes they're switched, sometimes they're backwards. So you know, you've got to read the book on that one to figure out what's going on with your machine. So on, on the Longevity Pro MTS, now that one they've got wired up just slightly differently. So the torch goes in the positive, the, uh, the ground goes in the negative. Some of the machines, they're backwards. On the AHP, uh, the Alpha TIG 200, whether it's the X or the DX, one of those little things that can go wrong. You never even think about it. Once again, I got that, I know. That stupid little plastic knob you get in the box, it's got a purpose. Don't throw it away. Use it on the machine where it belongs. When you hook your torch cable up to the machine and you screw that nut onto the front of it, Okay, the brass is hot electrically. That's how the current gets up to the torch. The gas goes through the middle of the, of the hose. So it's a dual purpose. If you don't put that little black plastic thing on there, this is now electrically hot when you're welding. And if you happen to like reach over here and touch it, or you know, you're around it, or somebody leans on it, you're gonna get shocked. Little plastic thing, it goes on there. And then just barely hand tight. You know, hand tight, just, just the tightest little snug. You don't need a wrench. You don't need a, you know, a, a monkey wrench or a pipe wrench or anything. I know a little thing that can go wrong. You know, just on the phone today with a guy in Florida about this. Uh, he was playing with the pulse. Well, he was trying to play with the pulse. You know, and he said, the pulse won't work. I can't get the darn thing to work right. Well, you know, what's wrong with the pulse? Main amps right here. Or uh, pulse. Peak, the top of the pulse. Pulse amps, or pulse base, the bottom of the pulse. He had the knobs set the same. No pulse, no variation in the pulse. Even though the pulse was on, just a simple little adjustment right there. He had them both the same, nothing would happen. Turn the pulse base down. Even a little, just a little tiny bit is all you need, but turn it way down so you can actually see that pulse in there now. And now you can get the, you know, start to get the hang of what to do with it, figure out where to adjust those knobs. Another thing that can go wrong, especially out here in Arizona, sitting here at the bench, trying to TIG weld. I got my gloves on. I should be safe. No. <laughs> Get all sweaty, lean up against the metal bench as you're leaning out there to try to do something, and just get that little tingle, you know, get that little current, get that little rush, because now you're getting in into the current, you're getting into the path right there just by leaning up against that metal bench or that metal sculpture, or you know, working on a car and leaning against the car when you're all hot and sweaty. If the ground is there and the current is there and you kind of get in between them you're going to get tingled just a little bit. Gloves, sleeves, even just the heat sleeves. You know, just something to put on your arm just to insulate you 
from your work. No bare arms if you can, if you can get away with it. You know, I know it's hot, especially here, but that's part of the safety. That's what you should be using. What's the temperature here today, Cap? Uh, right now it's about 95 in here with the cooler running. I think it's about 108 or 110 outside right now. You know, they're forecasting 111 to 112 later on in the week. Oh my God. And probably one of the biggest things that can go wrong with the TIG welders, especially for new guys, especially for people just learning. Uh, it's a little technical. You got a circuit board in that machine called a high frequency start board. That's what allows you to come over here and get you know off the metal and just click the button, you know, click the trigger or push on the foot pedal and have that arc start. There's a set of contacts inside there. They actually move. Some of them move. You know, some of them just arc across. But these contacts have to open and close to make that start work. A lot of guys, especially new guys, they wind up burning up their machines because they stick the tungsten. They touch the tungsten to the metal, they click the trigger, or as they're sitting there welding and they get the filler rod right up against the end of the tungsten, they weld the whole darn thing to the table, or you know, to your piece of work. They normally get zapped through the glove because now you're part of the current again, but your machine is still on that high frequency set of points over there is still saying, oh, wait a minute, the arc went out, I gotta start it again. So it's dumping all kinds of current over here through those little tiny contact points to try to get that arc to start. And you wind up burning up the points in the machine. You do it, you know, eight, 10, 15 times, and you start to notice, boy, it's hard to start. I got to get closer. It's hard to start. You know, like sometimes I got to just, you know, scratch it a little bit to get it to start. Because the points are burned up in it. You know, you need to adjust them. You need to clean them. You need to stop sticking that tungsten to the metal. That's one of the biggest killers of these machines is that right there. Uh, that gives you a lot to think about. You know, a lot of things to keep in your mind when you're trying to work, you're trying to learn, you know, how to do this, this fascinating little field of, of, of work here. But let me give you two more things to think about. That subscribe button, and come out to my website and check out my work and sign up for my newsletter. I'm going to go back to work. I'll see you guys next week.